uh, have the utmost adoration for Dr. Denise Bill. Uh, super, uh, this is not the most formal introduction, but when I think of Dr. Denise Bill, I think of a wicked, smart, superwoman who uh, does incredible work for her tribe. Uh, we are so pleased to have her and her crew here today. And uh, there's great folks that I know that she's bought, so. Good morning. Thanks, everybody. I'm really happy to be here today. And um, I wanted to read the contemporary definition of, um, of muggle shoot and, and kind of who we are. We have some emerging young scholars in their college years. Um, my nephew, Justice Bill, uh, Wayne Buchanan, some of our elders, Colby King George, um, my brother, Willard Bill uh, uh, Jr., who's uh, the culture director from the tribe. Um, been working on a new definition um, about kind of the treaty rights, and I'll just read it to you. Um, uh, it's a little bit different than what the website says. Our that definition is probably going to be changing. Um, so the Muckleshoot Indian tribe historically lived throughout the Green and White River watersheds and the Cedar and the Black River. Muckleshoot Indian tribe are signers of both the Medicine Creek and Point Elliott treaties. Our usual and accustomed area encompasses King County, including the city of Seattle. The ancestral language of the Muckleshoot is Buckleshootsi, which has been spoken in this area for over 10,000 years. Today is celebrated as we are alive and strong as a sovereign nation. And so um, how, how it works uh, with uh, native tribes, for example, we are Muckleshoot Indian tribe, we are our own government. So we're our own nation. So um, those of us that are enrolled Muckleshoot tribal members like myself, and a lot of the presenters today, you know, we um, have dual citizenship. So we are citizens of the Muckleshoot Indian <coughs> tribe, and we're citizens of the U.S. United States. Um, and so um, I also wanted to take a moment uh, to just talk about um, some of the Muckleshoot tribal members are in Alcatraz right now in San Francisco, and to support the AIM movement, the American Indian movement. And those of you that are scholars can download that and learn more about the American Indian Movement. But it uh, basically started in 1968, and it was initially formed to work on systemic areas of poverty and police brutality against Native Americans in the 1960s. And so similar to other cultures, um, starting as organizations to combat different issues in their community, so did Native Americans. And some people have different views on AIM, American Indian Movement, but it was started to address police brutality towards Native people and also um, the deep poverty um, for, for Native Americans. Today, you guys are all living in a world where uh, it's kind of cool to be Native now, right? It's cool to date a Native person, to, to be with Native people, to go to Native casinos and all of that. But if you just step back about 40 years ago, like in the city of Auburn, it wasn't very cool at all. And you know, I was a student in the Auburn School District at the time, and, and when I was in fourth grade, I was with my best friend at the bus stop, and she says, oh, who are you? What's your ethnicity? And I said, I'm Muckleshoot. And she says, ooh, you're one of those dirty Indians? And that was my best friend. <laughs> and that was really hard, and so, um, that night after school, I went and told my mom what she said, and she said to always be proud of who I was and as the Muckleshoot Indian people. And so we've come such a far away um, and, and done different things. We've done the fishing in the 70s um, with all the fishing wars and everything. And then now, of course, the last 20 years, um, we have such uh, we're in a really a time of prosperity right now because of our work with uh, the casinos and the Muckleshoot Indian Tribe. I would just like to say most of our profits go into education. We have the best scholarship package probably in the country for our people. We have put our money into healthcare, housing, 
um, all of these important things for our people and cultural um, and language. So um, with that being said, the, the first group I want to introduce you to this morning is the Muckleshoot Language Department. We're so honored to have them here today. So if the Muckleshoot Language Department would come, come here, they're going to sing a few songs for us and, and speak. Muckleshoot people, um, Mount Rainier is uh, sacred to us, so we have a prayer song, um, and that's what we will start the day with. Yeah. 
Kod Vitog Wilcha. That means we speak to each other. U Afshi Tog Wilcha. We give to each other. U Kwak Wak Tog Wilcha. We help each other. And Wal Dapas Wolach Loyal Tog Wilcha. And in this way, we strengthen one another. <coughs> My name is Ashley Black, Morgan Blackie. Um, I do the Brown College and Okay, so yeah, as you can see, we have teachers throughout our community. Um, we have, they teach at our Muckleshoot Tribal School, um, kindergarten through 12th grade. There's languages being taught there at our Child Development Center and also at our Early Learning Center and we do have community classes also. 
Thank you very much, Eileen, and the whole team for being here today. Really appreciate it. Scholarship Department, which over the last 17 years since the scholarship program started, over 600 Muckleshoots have now earned degrees, and we know that's only going to just, you know, continue on. And then um, I oversee the Muckleshoot Tribal College, and we have some staff here today from the Muckleshoot Tribal College. I don't know if you guys would, would stand um, or wave. I uh, just want to thank them for also being here and then forward in the back here. And then, um, and the Muckleshoot uh, Tribal College is a partnership-based uh, college right now. We have many different um, institutions that partner with us. Um, we're working on a, a certified nursing assistant program with um, Renton Technical College right now. We have a GED High School 21 program. We have an NT Plus program, which is a Native American career technical education program grant offering for the first time ever an AAST degree in information systems and security with Green River College, Green River is one of our big partners um, for that, so it's a free um, AAST degree in IT, so we're really excited, and that's open to everyone, not just Muckleshoot tribal members. And then, uh, let's see, we have um, also Northwest Indian College. Is Edna Wayana here this morning? Okay, good. Edna's gonna come up and just, you can go ahead and come on up and I'll introduce you. Um, uh, to say a few words, um, or actually I'll bring you up in a few more minutes if you don't mind. And so if you're ever in the area, Muckleshoot Tribal College is white, right? You've been probably to the White River Amphitheater. So if, if you've gone to the uh, White River Amphitheater, you've gone just about a block too far. We're on the right by the King County Library. So anyone's welcome to come to the Muckleshoot Tribal College. You don't have to be native. And we try to do a good job of offering a variety of programs for our people and our community. Um, so um, now um, I'm really pleased to um, introduce um, our next special guest. And the article. Um, I want to just sh uh, share this article about my niece, Sovereign Bill, uh, Miss Molly of Denali. And I'll just read a couple words of this. Growing up, Sovereign Bill's parents didn't let her watch Pocahontas or Peter Pan. They wanted her to learn about her culture through their family traditions and beliefs, not by watching movies they believed, embraced stereotypes, and skewered what it means to be Native American. Now, Bill, otherwise known as Sovereign, is using her own voice to make sure Native kids today have real representation on TV. That's why today is honoring her as a groundbreaker for International Day of the Girl. The 15-year-old from Otter, Washington voice, voices the main character in the new PBS cartoon, Molly of Denali, which follows a young Alaska Native girl on adventures exploring her culture and her community. Uh, Bill told today's style that Native people are often represented in Western media, and when they are, it's usually misrepresentation. Uh, TV and movies show stereotypes and the Indian and the headdress, but there are a lot of differences between Native cultures. A Native tribe in Montana different than a native tribe of Washington, Bill said. I think Molly of Denali is different in a lot of ways, she added. One, it's showcasing a native culture and representing it in a good way, and it shows Alaska as well, and a lot of people don't know Alaska. And so, and then also, um, uh, just I think a few days ago I received a message that uh, Sovereign is uh, maybe she can tell a little bit more of it, uh, about this, but she's been being recognized as one of the uh, one of 18 of the most influential uh, young women, 18 and under. So let's give a big warm welcome to Sarah. <laughs> going to um, introduce Miss Robin Pratt, who's wonderful in her own right. She's the Indian Ed Coordinator for Auburn School District. And so we try, you know, all of us in the Muckleshoot community, we all consider ourselves all family, both all Native people. So 
Um, we'll let you say a few words or how many words you want to say, and then we'll show a few clips. So the first part of my introduction, I introduced myself in Klinkit, um, where I'm Klinkit on my mom's side. And the second part of my introduction, I introduced myself in the ship seat from my dad's side. Um, so my name is Sovereign Bill. Uh, I voice the Molly in Molly of Denali, um, a new show, and Mako Shu in Klinkit, as I said. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I'm glad to see everyone here today and that I'm able to be here um, and just talk a little bit about it, I guess. Um, so yeah, I think I'm very proud to be in it and very um, glad that I'm able to do this work. And um, even if I wasn't in, in the show, I would still be so happy that this is coming out because this is really the representation we need because um, we're like, People say like we're no longer killing natives, right? Um, but with this invisibility, it's also still putting us down and putting us in the dark. And so this is giving a light and um, good representation that we've um, long uh, been awaiting, I guess, if that makes sense. <laughs> and um, so yeah, I'm so happy that we'll be able to show a little bit about this, um, a little bit about the world of Mali. And yeah. I'm Molly. I'm Sovereign's mom. <laughs> and Mo uh, the driver for Molly of Denali. <laughs> and um, it, it really has been a wonderful journey. Um, I'm Robin Pratt, and um, let's see, good cheese. Uh, so same introduction, my Clinket name is Naji Ishpa, and um, I'm from Alaska and Clinket from the Dakdane Tong clan. And um, just really this project has been so phenomenal, um, and I'm, there's, you know, there's a fair amount of supporting that takes place to, um, on our part to help make it happen, and it's, um, but it's, it's full worth it. And I don't know, how many in here have already seen an episode of Molly of Denali? Like, raise your hand. Okay, so you're in for a treat. Um, and I, I don't want to take up too much of the, the time because this is so phenomenal, but I am a coordinator. Um, Denise Bill actually was my boss um, at, in Auburn School District, and so I kind of stepped into that role um, a little while after she moved on, and um, we have, in Auburn School District, we work closely with the Muckle Street Tribe and have uh, about 670 Native American students, and um, 200, about 200 or so are Muckle Shoe, and 240 or so are from Washington tribes in Auburn School District. So just wanted to share that. Thank you. Poor Robin, I, th I think I've been her boss most of her life. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we like to keep it all in the family, right? So um, and Robin's doing great things um, in Washington State. Um, and it, it, we have a saying in, in the Native community, it takes a village, it takes all of us, you know, um, to work together to do the great things that we do. So let's, let's see this clip without further ado here. It's a positive image that children can feel good about. Yeah! 
Being a part of the first Alaska Native show makes me feel like I'm making an important change. Never underestimate the power of Molly. Kids are going to love Molly. She and her friends go on lots of adventures and they use information to help them. Looks easy enough. Okay, I'll do it. informational text, knowledge, and skills. Got it. Informational texts teach us about the world around us. Woo! Yay! We found it! Alaska is such a wonderful context for the Molly and Janali universe. Molly and Janali also has children interacting with informational text much as Molly and her friends do within the show. We're in luck. Your hero has a blog. When WGBH set out to make this project, they really went about things in the right way, which is partnering in a really deep and meaningful way with the Alaska Native community. And we said we wanted Alaska Native people at every level of production, and that's happening. I'm helping create content that Alaska Native kids can see and, and be proud of, and it fits within who we are, we're storytellers. Part of the beauty of this series is sharing our Alaska Native values in a way that shows how connected we truly are. The most important thing I want kids to take away from the show is that the Native culture is still very alive. The stories are absolutely universal. <gasps> That's it! Well, what's it? It's about everyone taking care of each other oh. and trying to make this world a better place.
I'm sorry, Sergoya. I don't sing anymore. But how can you not sing? Everybody sing! Oh, oh. I don't sing anymore because... Time. We have to stop right there, but let's give another round of applause to this following group. You're left on a cliffhanger. <laughs> but um, you, th this is online. Um, it does show on PBS, and so you can check your local listings. Um, it's also showing in Canada on CBC. But um, there are full episodes loaded on both the PBS Kids website and on, um, on the internet. So you could go to YouTube and Google uh, Molly of Denali. And what's remarkable about this particular episode is he was just about to say that he doesn't sing anymore. He's, he lost his songs. And that um, the episode will um, connect to the boarding school era, which is something that has definitely affected our native communities in Canada and all across the United States. So I really encourage you to um, look that up. Each episode is only 11 minutes long, and um, and just just enjoy it. State. Her grandfather's David so happy that would be a good person to Google and research for the fishing rights. Um, so very strong family and you can reclaim that language for you too and uh, just like we're, we're all trying to do. So um, the next person I'm really proud to get to introduce this morning 
is um, Mincy Cross Judge, a Muckleshoot tribal member, and um, she is the grandma of Rosalie Fish, and some of you probably have been hearing about her. Um, and so let's give a warm welcome to Mincy Cross Judge. Good morning. I appreciate being here for Indigenous Day, and um, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Mincy Cross Judge. I'm the Continuing Education Coordinator for the Muckleshoot Tribe. I've been working at the Tribal College for going on 15 years. I've worked for the Tribe for 30 years, and I've lived in Muckleshoot all my life. Um, the young lady you're going to be seeing this morning is my granddaughter. Her name is Rosalie Fish. Uh, she's a Calvin's member and has been raised all her life in the Muckleshoot Reservation. Rosalie started off last year. Um, she is a track star, and she went uh, and raced in Spokane, and she raced in the 400 meter, and she raced for, she's racing for a cause for missing and murdered indigenous women. Her platform was widely recognized throughout the state, throughout the country, as she raced with a handprint, um, a red handprint across her mouth, and the MMIW down her leg. The red handprint across her mouth is like silencing the women, the Native women uh, that we have in our families that are missing and murdered. She ran the 400 meter and she won first place for Marianne Upman, who was missing in Auburn and passed away. A championship for Alice Looney in the 1600 meter, she won first place. A championship for Jacqueline Sailors in the 800 meter. And a championship for our own Muckleshoot member, Renee Davis and Davis's unborn child who died on the Muckleshoot Reservation for the 3200 meter. Each were indigenous women from Washington who met a violent death and each were honored on a poster that Fish brought to the state to the state meet. And uh, I'll, I'll let you uh, Here's Rosie. My name is Rosalie Fish, and I'm from the Muckleshoot Reservation. I run the 3200 meters, the 1600 meters, the 800 meter, and sometimes the 400 meter, and I ran at Muckleshoot Travel School. When I saw a Lakota runner named Jordan Marie Daniels, she ran in the Boston Marathon with the red handprint, and that was really powerful to me to see another female native runner using her platform, and I decided that I needed to raise the bar for myself. I qualified for state championships on May 25th, I ran with the red handprint over my mouth to represent the Native women that have been silenced through violence, and I ran with MMIW down my right leg, that is the acronym for Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women. I won a gold medal in all three of those events, and I won a silver in the 400. For me, running is where I can use my voice the strongest. It's also something that uplifts me, and now I've found that I can use my sport to uplift other people as well. I do plan to continue running for missing and murdered indigenous women and for running for all of native communities to help raise the voices of indigenous people. This segment is brought to you by Verizon. The red is the color of the MMIW movement, and the handprint is to represent the women, and specifically the Native women, that have been silenced through violence. She's given a voice to those who have been silenced.
245. Missing and murdered Indigenous women um, is an epidemic that you can't really ignore when it's happening to your family and your community. And to me, when I realized that I could use the state track meet as an opportunity to present this issue, it was something that I knew I needed to do. Only my mother and my coach knew about my exact plans because I knew that some people might tell me to keep politics out of sports, being Native American and representing missing and indigenous women and bringing awareness to the epidemic isn't a political statement, but rather just an aspect of my humanity and my identity. And I didn't want that to be interfered with in any way. Boston Marathon runner Jordan Marie Daniels is a Lakota tribal member. And she ran at the Boston Marathon with red paint over her mouth and MMIW down her leg. And when I saw that, I was inspired. She told me that it was going to be very painful to run, and she was right. It was very, in a way, sometimes traumatic to just to think of you know, the stories of these women. And um, she told me that I needed to pray. We need to show up. We need to be persistent. We need to keep talking about this. already there was 13 about 13 um, missing uh, women in uh, Indian women indigenous women um, and then went for my sister to go missing and it, it left our family where is she and we looked on the sides of the roads we looked everywhere and just what dumbfounded us to where is she she's just disappeared <laughs> shaking and trembling because it said the body was there for a long time and I called Mary and she called the tribal police she called me back next day and said it was her and I just broke down because 14 months I was looking for her every day not knowing if she was hungry being abused if any, in any way but I was grateful that we got her, got her back. Our prayers were answered. We was glad we found her, but um, we wanted to know, well, what are you guys doing to find the answers? How did she get out there? Um, and was there any foul play? Um, and they couldn't answer it for us. Thank you, Mitzi Cross Judge, for being here, Grandma of Rosalie Fish. Um, we just want to thank all of you for being here. We know people have to leave for class and everything like that. But this year, we chose to represent, we didn't even say the other person's name today, someone that was a rapist and murderer, and that uh, today was named after, as Native people, we have reclaimed this day. It's, it's now um, Indigenous People's Day to honor all the Indigenous people that have survived despite men that have tried to hurt women. So thank you all for being here today. <laughs>